I'm Lydia Deacon and I work for West Country Rivers Trust. In this series of films we'll talk you through signing up to our West Country Citizen Science Investigation Scheme. Hello and I'm Simon Browning, I work at West Country Rivers Trust too and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about the CSI scheme. Uh, it started five years ago and our aim really is to get people out monitoring their local rivers all across the West Country. We have 850 plus water bodies to look after and a lot, a lot of those don't get any other monitoring if, if you don't do it. So um, yeah, please help out and watch these set of videos and uh, that'll help you get started. We're going to run through the water quality testing elements now. So I've got my sample from the river and the first thing we do is the turbidity test. Now it takes just over a litre to fill this, so with a one and a half litre bucket we should, we'll be able to fill it if we need to. But essentially making sure that you are, um, you have the tube in your shadow so it's not, the sun isn't directly on it, then you can pour the water slowly into the tube. It's worth stopping every once in a while to check that you can still clearly see the disc. You'll soon get a feel for what a turbid sample looks like. Still fine. If you get to the top of the tube and you can still see the disc, then you record it as less than 12. If you're somewhere in here, then you can record the number that's nearest where the water level is. So once we've done the turbidity test, we only need a little bit of water. I've only got sort of two inches of water in this bucket uh, because when we're leaving this in here, it's important that this, this device doesn't get wet beyond the screen there. We really want to keep the water level down to about here. So that's been sat in there for a couple of minutes now. Um, because I, may, I want to make sure the temperature settles down to what the, to the water temperature. Uh, the best way to check that is to um, angle it so you can see and it's come down now to 17.1 degrees and if I just watch that for a little while um, I normally leave it 30 seconds just to check that that number isn't changing anymore then once it is, once that number is settled, press the hold button You'll hear it beep as you as you let go, and that fixes the result. So now you can take it out of the water and and read uh, the numbers off the screen. So I can write on my survey form the temperature is 17.1 degrees. If I press temp one more time, it then tells me the temperature in Fahrenheit. That's reading 62.7. We don't want that. If we press temp one more time to move on to the total dissolved solids value and that's reading 208. You can just see in the bottom corner it's saying PPM. So if it was on Fahrenheit there's an F in the top corner. The other way to tell is that um, the total dissolved solids figure doesn't record to a decimal. So if it's got a decimal reading then you're reading temperature. The next test we're going to do is the phosphate test. But before we do that we're going to get our TDS probe and our thermometer settling in the water so if you can pop it in the in your sample bucket or your sample vessel it can take a couple of minutes for those to come down to the temperature of the water so it saves time if you can get that get that going whilst you're um, doing your phosphate test for the phosphate you'll need your test tube and your syringe and of course your phosphate test strips and it's important to first rinse both so we can take a sample fill the syringe and discard that then fill the test tube, halfway will do, put the lid on, give it a good shake, discard that too. Then we know that any sample from previous tests is, is gone and rinsed away. This time now we can fill the sample, fill the test tube to the 10 milliliter line, it's at the top of the test tube. Over the top there. And that does need to be quite accurate. Then we can take a, t a strip from the pot. Try not to get your wet fingers inside. Just sort of feed one out to you. Bend it into a J shape with the pads facing inwards and pop that into the lid. Then pop the lid on, push it till it clicks and then invert that five times slowly making sure that the bubble gets to the top each time. Two, three, 
four, and five. Then remove the lid, take the strip and pop that in your pocket. And then we're going to look for a colour change in the tube against the colour squares on the pot. So you just pop the square end of the tube onto the white squares next to each blue square and check which colour it's nearest to. This one is right down at zero, there's no blue in there at all. If it does sit part way between the two, then go for the lower one.